charge up there. Move along. Hagrid! Ron and Hermione squeezed together to give Hagrid enough space to join them. Been watching from me hut, said Hagrid, putting a large pair of binoculars round his neck. But it isn't the same as being in the crowd. No sign of the snitch yet, eh? No, said Ron. Harry hasn't had much to do yet. Kept out of trouble, though, that's something, said Hagrid, raising his binoculars and peering skywards at the speck that was Harry. Way up above them, Harry was gliding over the game, squinting about for some sign of the snitch. This was part of his and Wood's game plan. Keep out of the way until you catch sight of a snitch, Wood had said. We don't want you attacked before you have to be. When Angelina had scored, Harry had done a couple of loop-the-loops to let out his feelings. Now he was back to staring around for the snitch. Once he caught sight of a flash of gold, but it was just a reflection of one of the Weasley's wristwatches. And once, a bludger decided to come pelting his way, more like a cannonball than anything, but Harry dodged it and Fred Weasley came chasing after it. All right there, Harry, he had time to yell as he beat the bludger furiously towards Marcus Flint. Slytherin in possession, Lee Jordan was saying. Chase a pusey ducks, two bludgers, two Weasleys and chase a bell and speeds towards the... Wait a moment. Was that the snitch? A murmur ran through the crowd as Adrian Pusey dropped the quaffle, too busy looking over his shoulder at the flash of gold that had passed his left ear. Harry saw it. In a great rush of excitement, he dived downwards after the streak of gold. Slytherin seeker Terence Higgs had seen it too. Neck and neck, they hurtled towards the snitch. All the chasers seemed to have forgotten what they were supposed to be doing as they hung in mid-air to watch. Harry was faster than Higgs. He could see the little round ball, wings fluttering, darting up ahead. He put on an extra spurt of speed. Wham! A roar of rage echoed from the Gryffindors below. Marcus Flint had blocked Harry on purpose and Harry's broom span off course. Harry holding on for dear life. Foul! screamed the Gryffindors. Madam Hooch spoke angrily to Flint and then ordered a free shot at the goalposts for Gryffindor. But in all the confusion, of course, the golden snitch had disappeared from sight again. Down in the stands, Dean Thomas was yelling, Send him off, ref! Red card! This isn't football, Dean, Ron reminded him. You can't send people off in Quidditch. And what's a red card? But Hagrid was on Dean's side. They ought to change the rules. Flint, Flint could have knocked Harry out of the air. Lee Jordan was finding it difficult not to take sides. So, after that obvious and disgusting bit of cheating, Jordan, growled Professor McGonagall. I, I mean, after that open and revolting foul, Jordan, I'm warning you. All right, all right. Flint nearly kills the Gryffindor Seeker, which could happen to anyone, I'm sure. So a penalty to Gryffindor taken by Spinner, who puts it away. No trouble. And we continue play. Gryffindor still in possession. It was as Harry dodged another bludger, which went sw spinning dangerously past his head, that it happened. His broom gave a sudden frightening lurch. For a split second, he thought he was going to fall. He gripped the broom tightly with both his hands and knees. He never felt anything like it. It happened again. It was as though the broom was trying to buck him off. But Nimbus 2000s didn't suddenly decide to buck their riders off. Harry tried to turn back towards the Gryffindor goalposts. He had half a mind to ask Wood to call time out and then he realised his broom was completely out of his control. He couldn't turn it. He couldn't direct it at all. It was zigzagging through the air and every now and then making violent swishing movements which almost unseated him. Lee was still commentating. Slytherin in possession, Flint with a quaffle. Passes spin, it passes bell, hit hard in the face by bludger. Hope it broke his nose. <laughs> Only joking, Professor. Slytherin score! Oh no. The Slytherins were cheering. No one seemed to have noticed that Harry's broom was behaving strangely. It was carrying him slowly higher, away from the game, jerking and twitching as it went. Don't know what Harry thinks he's doing, Hagrid mumbled. He stared through his binoculars. If I didn't know better, I'd say he'd lost control of his broom, but he can't have. Suddenly, people were pointing up at Harry all over the stands. His broom had started to roll over and over with him only just managing to hold on. Then 
the whole crowd gasped. Harry's broom had given a wild jerk and Harry swung off it. He was now dangling from it, holding on with only one hand. Did something happen to it when Flint blocked him? Seamus whispered. Can't have, Hagrid said, his voice shaken. Can't, can't nothing interfere with a broomstick except powerful dark magic. No kid could do that to a Nimbus 2000. At these words, Hermione seized Hagrid's binoculars. But instead of looking up at Harry, she started looking frantically at the crowd. What are you doing? moaned Ron, grey-faced. I knew it, Hermione gasped. Snape, look! Ron grabbed the binoculars. Snape was in the middle of the stands opposite them. He had his eyes fixed on Harry and was muttering non-stop under his breath. He's doing something. Jinx in the broom, said Hermione. What should we do? Leave it to me. Before Ron could say another word, Hermione had disappeared. Ron turned the binoculars back on Harry. His broom was vibrating so hard it was almost impossible for him to hang on much longer. The whole crowd were on their feet, watching, terrified, as the Weasleys flew up to try and pull Harry safely onto one of their brooms. But it was no good. Every time they got near, the broom would jump higher still. They dropped lower and circled beneath him, obviously hoping to catch him if he fell. Marcus Flint seized the quaffle and scored five times without anyone noticing him. Come on, Hermione, Rod muttered desperately. Hermione had fought her way across to the stand where Snape stood and was now racing along the row behind him. She didn't even stop to say sorry as she knocked Professor Quirrell headfirst into the row in front. Reaching Snape, she crouched down, pulled out her wand and whispered a few well-chosen words. Bright blue flame shot out of her wand onto the hem of Snape's robes. It took perhaps 30 seconds for Snape to realise that he was on fire. A sudden yelp told her she'd done her job. Scooping the fire off him into a little jar in her pocket, she scrambled back along the row. Snape would never know what had happened. It was enough. Up in the air, Harry was suddenly able to clamber back onto his broom. Neville, you, you can look, Ron said. Neville had been sobbing into Hagrid's jacket for the last five minutes. Harry was speeding towards the ground. When the crowd saw him clap his hand to his mouth as though he was going to be sick, he hit the pitch on all fours, coughed, and something gold fell into his hand. I've got the snitch, he shouted, waving it above his head, and the game ended in complete confusion. He didn't catch it. He nearly swallowed it. Flint was still howling 20 minutes later, but it made no difference. Harry hadn't broken any rules and Lee Jordan was still happily shouting the result. Gryffindor had won by 170 points to 60. Harry heard none of this, though. He was being made a cup of strong tea back in Hagrid's hut with Ron and Hermione. It was Snape. Ron was explaining. Hermione and I saw him. He was cursing your broomstick, muttering he wouldn't take his eyes off you. Rubbish, said Hagrid, who hadn't heard a word of what was going on next to him in the stand. Why would Snape do something like that? Harry, Ron and Hermione looked at each other, wondering what to tell him. Harry decided on the truth. I found out something about him, he told Hagrid. He tried to get past that three-headed dog at Halloween. It bit him. We think he was trying to steal what it's guarding. Hagrid dropped the teapot. How do you know about Fluffy? He said. Fluffy? Yeah, he's mine. I bought him off Greek, chappy. I met in the pub last year. I lent him to Dumbledore to guard the... Yes, said Harry eagerly. No, don't ask me any more, said Hagrid gruffly. That's top secret, that is. But Snape's trying to steal it. Rubbish, said Hagrid again. Snape's a Hogwarts teacher. He'd do nothing of the sort. So why did he just try and kill Harry? cried Hermione. The afternoon's events certainly seemed to have changed her mind about Snape. I know a jinx when I see one, Hagrid. I've read all about them. You've got to keep eye contact, and Snape wasn't blinking at all. 
I saw him. I'm telling you, you're wrong, said Hagrid hotly. I don't know why Harry's broom acted like that, but Snape wouldn't try and kill a student. Now, listen to me, all three of you. You're meddling in things that don't concern you. It's dangerous. You forget that dog and forget what it's guarding. That's between Professor Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. Aha, uh -huh, said Harry. So there's someone called Nicholas Flamel involved, is there? Hagrid looked furious with himself. <laughs>